a singer-songwriter, broadcaster, audio-video artist, entertainment agent, and your host. It's the master storyteller himself, James Kevin O'Connor. Hey, hey, all right, back again, yes. Uh, so happy to have you guys here with me once again. And before we get into this super guest today, I want you to please forward this show to somebody who would really like the value that we have packed into this episode. And by the way, if you guys are really, really digging it, I'd like you to please leave me a review, the show podcasting your global career in the iTunes ecosystem. And in the show notes, there's a very simple link that gives you easy instructions. I think it's three or four steps. It'll take you just a couple of minutes. Can you spare a couple of sentences about the show? Give us five stars and why you like the show. I'd appreciate it. Today, we are going to investigate creative marketing. I've got the expert in this field. She provides excellent customer service to her clients, implements unique and meaningful marketing strategies to grow her client's business and gain company exposure. She instills trust with her clients and represents a company that is innovative, strategic, and provides personalized service for each client or company. She's humble and trustworthy, has the heart of a servant, believes in human to human, and also believes in serving the person you once were. Let's get together, what do you say? Strap up your seatbelts, we're taking a ride to Sacramento, California. To hang out with Tori Barker. We're going to talk about your brand and masterminding and clue everybody in as to what masterminding is. And exactly what you do with your creative marketing brand, which is really wonderful, and inform the public, like, what is this all about and how do we take advantage of it? Does that sound good to you? That sounds amazing. (laughs) So we're getting towards the the weekend. How's it feeling for you? You feeling relaxed? If you're going to do something fun or what are you going to do? Work like crazy? What are you going to do this weekend? Uh, No, I'm all about balance. Weekends are family. So for me, um, this weekend, you know, we don't have any baseball. My kids are are young, so we play, um, they play baseball right now, but you know, we're on spring break. And so we don't have any baseball games, but usually our Saturdays are full with baseball games. And then, you know, Sunday is the R and R rest and recover. <laughs> yeah. I I am getting back to that slowly. Um, and I haven't, I haven't been doing that enough because, um, you know, I, I used to work Sundays all the time. And then what happened was um, about five years ago, I said, you know, I, I don't want to work Sundays. I, I need, really need a full day of rest, just not do anything but read, go for a run, hike, what, bike, whatever. And uh, yeah. I found I was so much more effective. Like it was crazy. Monday would come and I'm like, man, I'm crushing it. And it was like, <laughs> I think the day off, like really just made such a difference. Yeah, you know? absolutely. You need that time to just kind of, you know, decompress and relax and just refocus. It's it's so important. Yeah, I, I'm figuring I'm figuring uh, that is it's kind of like the do less and gain more, you know, like uh, just let the mind be free and mind relax and you come back much stronger, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Well, even Jesus needed a day off, right? <laughs> yes. Yes, he did. Yeah. And, uh, you know, they broke bread and had wine. They had fun. (laughs) People thought it was all rules and regulations, but no, that dude knew how to have fun, you know? (laughs) So you're in, you're in, uh, you're in California, right? Yes. I'm in Northern California. So it's a shiny good morning out there, hopefully. Yes. Uh, It's been a rainy couple days, but uh, the sun is out and hopefully it'll stay out for the next, you know, few days here. No more storms coming. Yeah. Great. So, you know, I'm going to get right into it because um, I really have trouble doing like a 20 minute interview. I, I, you know, I'm I'm so accustomed for years and years doing full one hour interviews, you know, with, you know, songs in the, in the broadcast and everything. And I find that uh, I get really into like learning about my guests and everything. So why don't we rock and roll here? What do you say, Tori? 
Sounds like a plan. I'm ready. Cool. So your journey, what led you to the space that you are in today? You're in creative marketing. So how did you first get involved to, you know, before you're even where you are now, like what was the first inkling that you belonged in this space? Because it's still a relatively new space. Would you agree? Yeah, and I, I think I'm still on a uh, on a journey. I, I haven't really reached that pinnacle, if you will. <laughs> I don't know that I ever will. I'm always on a journey and uh, learning and growing. But you know, for me, I uh, things that are integrated into to my life and my business are uh, creativity uh, and leadership, and that started for me at a, a young age. I uh, have an athletic background, and leadership was a core value that always led me in the teams that I played on, um, being a leader on the team and, and, uh, building a community with my, my friends and all of that stuff. And then creativity, you know, I come from two creative parents. Um, and so it was kind of ingrained in me and, and I didn't really fully know the potential of it until, um, I was in my twenties, um, and started working, uh, in the marketing department at a couple of corporate offices. And so as I was growing through the corporate world, uh, doing marketing, I had these, you know, inklings that I wanted to learn more and I wanted to do more and grow and do all these things. And so I kind of tried to climb that ladder, you know, in the corporate space, you know, trying to get to the the top of the ladder and and be that marketing um, VP or the, the, you know, chief marketing officer. And I got to a point about four years ago where I was just not happy and I felt like I had so much more to give and so many more people that I could help with the knowledge and skills and and tools that I had for myself. Um, So I started looking at, you know, other opportunities and just decided to go out on my own. And, um, you know, I was like, you know, looking at it kind of as freelance at first, right? And slowly uh, it evolved into a business. And I I hadn't intended on that, but I'm glad that um, that had presented itself to me. And it gives me the the ability to help so many more people and to use these, these skills that I have and evolve and be innovative and, you know, take on new uh, adventures with the skills that I have to help other people to grow their business and make a difference in their world. So a couple of questions. So first of all, you said you're into athletics, right? So what was your wheelhouse? What did you enjoy doing? Uh, Softball. So I played uh, collegiate, yeah, collegiate softball. So I played in college um, and I played all from t-ball to college ball. (laughs) Nice. Really awesome. What a great sport. Yeah. Yeah. Um, And then leadership. You said, so when you first discovered that you had that in you as far as being a leader, like where were you in your life when you had that, you know, that sort of epiphany that just popped in one day? Well, for me, it was uh, it was natural, you know, like on in my sports team, I was always the captain. And so I would always take on that leadership role. But it was probably not until uh, high school and they had like a leadership club, right? Like we were a, a, a group of, of kids who were the leadership kids. And so we would take on activities at school and we would promote stuff going on um, with the different departments and education type things and stuff like that. So I took a big role in that leadership aspect there and then just kind of always led as that that captain, whatever you know team I was on, whether it was in business or personal life or in just social uh, settings. I was always kind of the leader and um, really wanting to help and encourage people and bring them up as well and, and shine light on other people. So it wasn't really necessarily just an epiphany that happened one day. It was more of a process that happened over time, would you yeah, say? Yeah. And for me, I'm I, I'm coming into my, my own um, self, really. And, and it's evolved over time. I've had these kind of skills and these natural, like, you know, abilities that I had never really reflected on until recently starting my own business and really looking back at, you know, the journey that I've gotten to where I am and, and how all of these pieces have played a specific role in getting me to this point in my life as, you know, a business owner and, you know, a visionary and, and a podcast host. And, you know, it's just, it's an amazing journey that I'm on and I just continue to learn and surround myself with people who are in the same situation and can help me grow. So it seems as though your uh, level of awareness has like blossomed more because it it seems like, you know, you were uh, attracting this 
somehow it was like like emblazoned into your DNA. You were a leader. You probably didn't know it. But all of a sudden you find yourself the captain. Everybody's always turning to you and saying, Tori, what do we do? Right? You you found that, right? (laughs) Yeah, absolutely. So how are you sitting in that space? Are you comfortable in your own skin being where you are, having that, you know, having that kind of gift? I am. You know, I, I love, um, I love that I have that gift and it gives me the opportunity to help people and to serve people. And that's really, um, important to me. Uh, so being in that role really enhances that ability. And so, you know, I, I embrace it. You know, I love being the one who can answer the questions, who can solve the problems, who can lend a hand, um, always there to kind of help people. And and that's what I think is a, a leader and guiding somebody and leading by example. So, I'm happy to to pave the way. So as you started to like, you know, kind of embrace this idea of I'm in corporate, I'm successful, yet I'm unsatisfied. So at some point you just said, I'm going to break out and start my own company. So just set the table for us, if you will. Did podcasting come first? Did like, what were you thinking when you left? Did you have like a grand plan or did you say, I have a collection of ideas that I need to vet out and see what's going to come first? How did it work for you? Yeah, for me, well, first of all, it was a leap of faith, right? I didn't really know that I was going to, uh, I didn't know if I was going to be successful. I knew that I could figure things out and 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 make things happen. So I knew that about myself. So I wasn't afraid of failing, um, but I was afraid you know, to, to go out and do it on my own. Cause I had always had people surrounding me. Um, but when I started my own business, it was a collection of things, right? So I had skills that I knew I could apply to, to different, um, companies or for different, uh, resources. And I like to learn. So I always kind of, you know, find uh, things that help me grow and learn. So podcasting wasn't really, um, something that I had thought about. I, I loved listening to podcasts and uh, consuming it as a consumer. Um, and then I started kind of diving into the the methodology and the marketing behind podcasting and uh, really fell in love with it because of so many dynamics that come together. You know, it's building community, it's sharing a message, it's marketing, it's branding, it's strategy. There's so much so many elements that go into to podcasting that I just had to weave that into the digital marketing that I was already doing because it was the platform that would set me apart from my my uh, competitors, right? Like there's there's it's crowded in the digital marketing space, but for me to be a podcaster, have the skill set, have the knowledge, have the network um, would set me apart, and so that was really the catalyst for the podcast and has really helped me to grow my my business from there. Yeah, it it is um, kind of amazing that when you look under the hood of the podcasting, it's all the things you just described and then so many more, you know, and yeah. it's still a bit of an enigma for, for many people. It, they just don't really understand uh, the people who are not in it. It seems like there's two camps that I've observed. It's like the people that are all in. And they're listening to constant podcasts all the time. And then there's the ones that, no, I'll never go there. You know, I'm a, I'm a YouTuber yeah. or I'm or whatever, you know, I'm yeah. a streamer. But um, I think the more people that are waking up to it are starting to really uncover the value. And just the quick story that I, I remember sharing was I was telling people like five or six years ago that, you know, I probably learned, got, got more value and learned more things by listening to podcasts than the thousands I spent on all of these uh, courses <laughs> that I invested right. in, you know, because right. it's all there for the taking. You just have to, you know, open it up and, and listen to it. So when you got into the space of, you know, you started this plan to do your creative marketing, um, you have a lot of things that you're offering people right now. Like you're building their brand. Uh, you're you're helping them with CRM. You're helping them with, you know, SEO, is it too? I'm um, yeah, yeah. You, yeah. So you you've got like kind of the whole package going on there. What did yeah. you tackle first? Because a lot of these are difficult um, mm-hmm. to you know you can't learn them in a weekend. It takes you know <laughs> years to really yes. uncover this stuff. So which one did you tackle first? That was a big one. 
Well, so my journey in marketing started with graphic design. Okay. And so I started with, you know, being creative in the design aspect. And so I learned graphic design, which then evolved into branding. Um, and then the technical aspects of it, you know, the uh, advertising, the social media, the website, all the components of a website, content, SEO, all of these these pieces I learned through my journey on um, in corporate marketing. So, you know, time well spent, if you will, <laughs> taking advantage of that time in corporate to learn all these different aspects. And, and because of the, the positions I was in, I had to learn different things. So it was to my advantage that I was able to grow and learn. So for me, you know, it really started in the creative, the design aspect. Um, and so when I started my own business, you know, just taking those same skills that I had learned over time that, you know, people who are just starting out in marketing, like you said, they can't just pick those things up overnight. So I had, you know, a true advantage that I had this tenure and this experience that I had gained over the 15 years that I was in corporate marketing uh, to be able to bring to the table and help my clients. And, and for me, you know, my agency does all of the things, right. But for me, I'm really stepping into my own uh, and finding my own role in consulting and building a mastermind um, so that I can help higher level companies to grow and take all this knowledge that I have from all these years to just really elevate people through that group setting and through a mastermind setting. You know, isn't it funny how uh, the Lord seems to put us into boot camp. We never even know we're there. You know, it's like yeah. you have all these journeys that you're on. And you think this is it. Yeah. I'm going to be here like the rest of my life. Wherever. And it, in mo most cases, it, it doesn't appear to be true. It's uh, it's training ground for something coming up. And you're you're a for direct sure. proof of that, which is, is amazing. So you touched on something I really wanted to get into a little bit. And that is masterminding. Now, for those of you who have never had the um, experience of this. It's something that's so valuable. And I've been doing it off and on for years now, but I've never had the elevated experience that uh, we shared out in Salt Lake City. I think that was the best thing I've ever been at as far as masterminding. And, um, you know, just parking next to somebody who is in a completely different business world than I'm in, but yet I, take, I took away so much. I learned so much. So yeah. tell us about how it works when you're bringing people in, especially for uh, the neophyte who's coming in like, I don't know anything about this masterminding. What's this all about? Can you take yeah. us down a short journey of what can they expect if they get into a mastermind uh, session with uh, creativemarketingsacramento.com, uh, Tori's brand, and what, what, what will come out of this? Yeah, so how I like to explain it to people who may not have experienced a mastermind or don't know much about masterminds, it's a collective group of people who have a purpose and are open to, to growing and learning and sharing um, as a collective, really. And so for me, this really falls into the leadership role because me as the facilitator, of this mastermind sure i may be the expert in uh the marketing and the things that i'm going to be um, talking about and, and teaching and coaching um, but really it's all about the collective mind because i only know so much and i only have so much experience and so it would be a disservice to not allow other people to share their experiences so for me i'm building a um a mastermind for companies who need a marketing plan and a marketing strategy. And so bringing these people together, they all have different experiences. They're all from different industries. And that's the beauty of it because you can learn from, from other people and in other industries. And, and it's funny when, when people in marketing, you know, they, they all do the same thing, right? You'll, you'll see, you know, this company's all the real estate companies are doing this type of marketing, but it's not until somebody looks outside of their own industry and pulls something out of, you know, what somebody else is doing and puts it into the, to apply to their industry, it shakes things up. And so that's exactly what a mastermind is going to do is going to bring these wonderful people together to share ideas, to share successes, to help one another, uh, because we're all there for the same reason, right? We, we need to build a marketing plan. We want to be successful with our business. We want to make a difference. We need to know what the plan is. And so that's where I come in 
as that leader role and just facilitate this, this wonderful dynamic of people um, so that we can collectively grow together. Did you ever have to throw anybody out of the mastermind? <laughs> no. <laughs> did Thankfully, you, no, I did have you, not. <laughs> did you ever have to make somebody go sit in the corner for 30 minutes? <laughs> well, when we're on Zoom, you, we can just mute them. So that just makes it easier. <laughs> you get some fun characters. But I definitely hear you about um, uh, businesses that are not associated with one another. And then you think, well, why would I you know, even have anything to do with uh, this guy who's like a real estate person in Florida? And yet you just have this amazing bunch of resources that pop up that you never even thought about and say, wow, I could connect this to that. And I found that happening not just to myself when I was in Salt Lake City, but I I found everybody having the same experience of being able to just collectively reach down into their contact list and say, wow, I just popped into my head about this guy would be perfect for this woman. And it just went on and on. And I really feel like I'm very grateful for the relationships that were developed that continue to grow and and um, and just blossom like long after it's been months after we had this, you know, and uh, and I think they just get get stronger and stronger and more outreach from more people. Um, What is your what is your favorite part of your day, Tori, when you're working? What's your favorite part of what you do with all the things you have under the hood of that? big Ferrari you got out there. (laughs) (laughs) Oh my gosh. What's my favorite thing? Well, uh, well, it goes back to the creative thing. Anything that I can do to be creative uh, and help other people. So problem solving in a creative way. um, Those are my favorite things, just solving problems and making, making a difference. So yeah, I don't know. Great. And, and how about best place for people to connect to you? Uh, with you who are interested in bringing their brand together, who need all the kinds of help uh, that you have in your company, where can people reach you? Yeah, so I so my favorite social platform is LinkedIn. So you can find me on LinkedIn uh, under Tori Barker. But I have this really exciting thing that I've been developing, and it goes along with my master mind and uh, it's a visionary marketing framework and so with this framework I've created this fun quiz that people can take this quiz and it's got like 15 questions um, and it breaks down different aspects of your business as it relates to marketing and so by answering the results or by answering the questions you'll get these results that that I can take a look at and show and show you like okay based on these five core aspects of your marketing uh, this is where your strengths and weaknesses are. And so it's a fun quiz that I like to to share with people so that they can go on there and then I'll send them the results um, and, and show them, you know, hey, we need to work on this aspect. This is where you're, you know, really strong. Here's where you need to focus, all these different things. So I'd love if anyone wants to, to take the quiz. Uh, it's visionarymarketingquiz.com. And is there any fee for that? No, it's totally free. Wow. That is, that you know, that's a brilliant thing that you did there because there's nothing like going through a process like that to discover you know where the holes in your game are and and none of us know like if you're you're too close to your own brand you can never figure that out on your own you know so to have that is a very very um incredibly valuable tool so thank you for sharing that we'll definitely have that in all the um notes in the show notes will have all the links to all of uh, everything Tori Barker. And uh, closing comment, would you like to just share uh, some kind of tip that you can give to uh, our listeners to um, just kind of keep in the back of their mind if they're thinking about improving their brand, all the different things that they have going on in their life, where, you know, what could you share with them uh, to give them permission to reach out to you to say, Hey, this is a safe place to go. This is an expert. Um, why why should they come to you, Tori? Yeah, well, um, thank you, first of all, for giving me the opportunity to, to talk with you today and share my story. Uh, it truly means a lot to do that. Um, so for, for me, I think I'm, what sets me apart in this space as a, uh, a founder, uh, marketing person is that I, 
I really come across as uh, humble and trustworthy. And so I think that people really can feel that when they talk to me and they know um, that I don't have my own initiatives uh, at hand. And so I'm really a servant's heart, right? And I come to help people. Um, and I've learned over you know, the last couple months, there's, there's this term that I've heard and it's called uh, human to human. So H to H, everybody talks about B to B and B to C. And this term uh, human to human has really come to light for me. And so I love being able to connect with people because it's all about people. Um, and the other thing that I'll leave you with is, is something that I've learned too, is to serve the person you once were. And so if you look back at who you were, you know, one year ago, two years ago, and where you are today, how can you help that person that was you, you know, two years ago and bring them up to a place where you are today and help them build that connection? That is amazing. Sage wisdom. I love that. Serving who you were because um, we're all a work in progress, or are we not? So that is, that is brilliant. So Tori Barker, thank you so much for being a part of podcasting your global career. And of course, uh, everyone support Tori by checking out all of her links in the show notes. And Tori, just want to wish all of God's blessings on you, your family, your career, and uh, such a pleasure having you here today. Thank you, James. It's a pleasure to be here. Hey, if you guys like what's going on here, please leave a great review in the Apple Podcasts. I've left a simple review process in the show notes and we'd really appreciate it. And also, don't be shy. Forward this to your best friend because you know they need it. Hey, if you need some coaching, hit up the link in the show notes. It's calendly.com forward slash dharmic. And you can take a little chance with me and I'll get you on your way. That's a wrap for me today. I'm your host, James Kevin O'Connor. So until the next time when we meet again, I'll either see you on the socials or I'll see you from the stage. Ride on, ride on, baby, won't you take a ride with me? Ride on, ride on, we can untangle all the mystery. If wishes were windows, I'd open one and find That freedom is really a simple state of mind So ride on, ride on, baby, won't you take a ride with me? Ride on, ride on, we can untangle all the mystery Ride on, ride on, baby, baby, you and I can find the key Ride on, ride on, we can unlock each other's destiny I taste the breeze of freedom, it's tingling on my tongue Pictures in your mind I'll take you places